Hello friends, my name is Marines and this is the start of a reading vlog. It is Friday, December 23rd. The last time that I saw you guys, I had just finished up the next chunk of books and I have 12 books read for the month. And since then I have finished two more books. So first is The Fields by Erin Young. In my video where I shared how much I spent on books this year, I talked a little bit about how I started making these TikTok videos in Barnes and Noble. As a consequence of that, I bought more books in Barnes and Nobles this year than I have in a number of years. This was one of the books that I bought just solely based on the cover, the description. It is a basic procedural. We follow a sergeant in a small town named Riley Fisher who has to investigate a murder, a body found in a cornfield basically, and it is somebody that she knew in high school. And that relationship broke apart because of something that happened to Riley. So Riley is both investigating this murder but also coming face to face with her own past. This is a slow burn mystery. It takes a lot of time and is very slow paced and there is a lot of investigation which is all stuff that I personally really enjoy in mysteries. Like I want to be out there getting the clues, talking to people. I want to feel like it's really laid out in front of me. But if you need something that's a little quicker pace, this is certainly not going to do it. It is also a suspect heavy mystery. So you meet a lot of people. Everyone has done it at some point. And those are all qualities that like I get into moods where I just want a slow suspect heavy mystery and this delivered. I wouldn't say that there's anything sort of groundbreaking here. There isn't anything that I think I'm going to be thinking about for a long time time. The end was satisfying enough. I liked our main character. I was stressed at points. So it did everything that it had to do like right on the money. <laughs> it didn't go above and beyond. I would give this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I actually would reread this, especially if I got into this mood where I just wanted like a mystery like this. I would definitely come back to this and just have that mood satisfied. After I finished The Fields, which was book 13, <laughs> I started Thistlefoot by Jenna Rose Nethercott and I got, let's see, 94 pages into this one before I decided that, like, it's good. It has a lot of things that are right up my alley in terms of what I like, but not, it doesn't fit my current mood. So I'm not giving up on this. I'm going to continue probably to read it, maybe slowly, maybe in small chunks, but I just got that chunk into it and I was like, I'm still in the mood for like a thriller, mystery. So I went back to my TBR and decided to pick up The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I started this last night until it got too ghosty and <laughs> it was too late at night. So this is about a girl in 2017 who comes to upstate New York to investigate the disappearance of her aunt in, 19, in the 1980s. And so she ends up working at the same like rundown motel where her aunt was working when she disappeared. And we are flashing back and forth between the two characters as we see them basically putting together the same mystery with the character in the present day basically having the added element of the disappearance of her aunt. I finished this off this morning. I was off today and I knew even though there were things that I could be doing today to make my Saturday a lot easier, I wanted to dedicate some time to just sort of relaxing. So I was listening to this on audiobook, which I borrowed from my library as I was playing The Sims this morning for a handful of hours. Uh, that was lovely. It was perfect. It was much better to listen to the ghost story while I was playing The Sims rather than like late at night in bed. And I feel pretty similarly about this as I did The Fields in that it is a slow burn sort of mystery. We keep flipping back and forth in the timeline so it's slowing down the progress of the mystery itself. There were a lot of things in both timelines that were mirrors of each other so it did kind of start to feel a little bit repetitive and there were a few moments that I kind of lost the thread and I was like wait where are we who are we with but generally I found this pretty solid I would give it a also a 3.5 out of 5 stars it's difficult I wouldn't like highly recommend this and be like everybody check it out but it was exactly what I wanted in this current mood where I was like I want slow burn thrillers that I can just sit down and read in a couple of sittings and Simone St. James is pretty solid on delivering on that and this is book 14. After I finished that I realized I still wasn't done <laughs> with my little thriller run or mystery run so I have one more Simone St. James on my physical TBR this is also a book of the month 
and I started listening to this one because I got an audiobook from the library and I am 92 pages in. I have a feeling this is going to be like about the same thing like a solid three star book. Sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's what you're looking for It's just a solid three star book. Something that's gonna deliver, you know? I'm gonna work on finishing that off and I've got a few things that I could do again to make my life easier tomorrow, including wrapping the last of my gifts that I need to have wrapped and tomorrow I'm gonna do a lot of baking and a little bit of cooking. So my family celebrates Christmas on Noche Buena, which is the 24th. We have a late dinner on the 24th and then we wait up and we open gifts at midnight when it's officially Christmas. So that is our tradition and then I will spend the night at my mom's house so I don't have to drive back super late. So Bingley and I will be spending the night at grandma's house tonight. And Christmas we usually have breakfast and then we will go to church because it's a Sunday as well. So a jam-packed Saturday and Sunday. If I can finish wrapping gifts today and start some of the baking, like I can do like some of the icing that I need to make, I can maybe make the cake base for the tres leches that I'm making and just have it soaking the milk and then finish it off tomorrow. So there are a few things that I can start today. We'll see if I feel motivated enough. I might just keep it all together and like cram through it tomorrow. We'll see. Speaking of things to see, here's more of my TBR. So The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas, which has been on my TBR for a while because I got it for a book of the month. But also I feel like this is the current, like this is the reading mood I'm in. This could slot in very well. So if after I finish the Book of Cold Cases, I'm still feeling like ghosty vibes, thrillery vibe. I think this is more horror but I feel like it could slot into my current reading mood. As I was going through my physical TBR I saw Long Way Down the graphic novel by Jason Reynolds which was sent to me by the publisher. I don't even remember how long ago honestly at this point and it's there's just no reason for this to be sitting on my TBR. It's a good like short read that I can fit into this month but it is also one that I'm super curious about because I've never actually read anything by Jason Reynolds. Tonight when I'm in bed and actually reading a physical book versus listening to audiobook I'm going to try and read Iron and Magic by Alona Andrews. It is a spin-off sort of book from the Kate Daniel series and it slots in between 9 and 10 and people on my discord have told me that I really need to read it or that it's good to read it because it gives you information for the last book and I think I want to listen to this last book tomorrow while I'm <laughs> baking for Christmas. Is it the most Christmassy thing in the world? No. But does it just make me so warm inside to think about finally getting to book 10 like on Christmas Eve as I'm baking? I don't know. The vibe is right. So we'll see if I have time to binge that whole Iron and Magic tonight and if I do I'll pick this up tomorrow. And then still on my TBR is Legendborn and Bloodmarked which I know at this point I'm like am I even going to reread Legendborn or do I just need to get to Bloodmarked because we probably have a live show coming up like the 27th so I don't have a lot of time to read Two Thick Boys so we'll see how I feel about this. And so yeah those are the things that are at the top of my TBR. I did finish doing all of my wrapping so that's great um, but I didn't start any baking or cooking. I just couldn't work up like the the will to do so. Uh, whatever gets done tomorrow gets done tomorrow. So as I was like wrapping today but mostly just resting I finished the book of cold cases by Simone St. James. This quality wise is right at the same level of um, the Sundown Motel but I liked this story less. I liked the progression of the story less. All of Simone St. James books that I've read so far are like you know murder mysteries but with like a ghost element and so you have to go into it kind of accepting that there are going to be ghosts and the ghosts are real. It's not like anything where it's like uh, Scooby-Doo like <laughs> you know <laughs> someone in like a ghost costume or whatever they're real ghosts. But this story added like an additional element of like ghostiness or I don't know timey-wimey almost sort of thing that I didn't 
I don't know why it just didn't work for me. Like I was ready for the ghost. I was good with the ghost, but it kept doing like one additional extra thing that I was like, I don't like this. I also just didn't like the characters as much. And then also in this one, like we were flipping back and forth again between the past and the current investigation. And I think there were moments where we stayed too much in the past for too long. And it made me realize that I wanted to get back to the future. So I wasn't as invested in one of the timelines. And then just like the progression of everything and how it ended, it was kind of like meh for me. So quality wise, this is probably at that three star level that I predicted, but enjoyment wise, it's closer to like a 2.5 star. And you know, that's like at the edge of like if I would keep this or not, like I usually caught, keep my three stars and above. So this might be one that I eventually just kind of find a new home. But we'll see. I have a bunch of books that I have to decide what I'm doing with. I think for right now I'm going to sit on my couch some more and just read Long Way Down. So this is book 15 and this will be book 16. Let's do it. I said earlier that I hadn't read any Jason Reynolds and that is actually untrue. I read my first Jason Reynolds and it was also like a graphic novel sort of thing earlier this year when I read Ain't Burned All the Bright. And that one was really interesting in the way that it used breath to connect COVID and some of the protests that were going on around I Can't Breathe and then also creativity in the time of the pandemic and how using art can be a lifeline. And I was reminded that I read this because I started reading a long way down and I immediately had this moment of like, oh crap, like this is on me. I had no idea what I was getting into with the story, but I should have known because it's Jason Reynolds that it would be heavy. Wow. Wow. I obviously have not read the like the novel that the graphic novel is adapted from, but I can just tell that this like this fits so well in graphic novel format. The art was beautiful and affecting. This is like very emotional. Content warnings for gun violence and loss of loved one and there's depictions of blood in here as well and not in a super graphic way but in, again it just the art style captured everything really really wonderfully. I also like the whole time that I'm going through it I'm thinking I know what's going to happen and in a way I did but the ending of this was left open enough that it really was like a secondary gut punch. This was just really well done, very affecting, it got me into my feels. It's gonna leave you thinking a little bit at the end, especially about cycles, not only of trauma, but like the things that we pass down in families and through tradition and like, how do you break that? This yes five out of five stars not sure why that was on my tbr for so long but we did it it is now like too late to start the hacienda <laughs> Um, forgive me. You know, I gotta do what I gotta do as a big chicken. So I think I just might dive into Iron and Magic and try to get to sleep early today because I will be up early tomorrow for a full day of baking and then Christmas. Yay! Christmas! Good morning. I got up this morning and I got ready first. Usually like when I'm baking for holidays I just get up and get right to baking and then what always happens is that I run right up against time and then I'm rushing to get myself ready and I feel like tired and haggard <laughs> at the actual event. So I this might mean I run out of time to do things but I got myself ready first and even if I have to touch everything up before I go and put lipstick on and everything like that's easier to do in a rush and get ready. So, you know, I put me first today and now I'm ready to start baking and cooking. I started Iron and Magic last night and I got four chapters into it. And I think that's what I'm going to just try and power through and then get to Magic Triumphs while I'm doing everything today. I'm like fine with Iron and Magic right now. Is it Iron and Magic? Yes, Iron and Magic. Um, Hugh D'Ambre was like not a character that I found like I didn't have any feelings towards him other than like as an enemy of Kate's and I understand that that backstory is complicated and people find him compelling. I just was not in that camp and I'm not there yet with you know this is obviously going to do some work towards his character, give us more insight into him, redeem him maybe a little bit in our eyes and that's just like not my jam in any any sort of thing and 
So I'm like starting at a disadvantage with the story. And now like it's becoming clear that the main like romantic core here is like an enemies to lover sort of thing where they're, they don't know each other. This is the thing. This is the setup. This is exactly the enemies to lovers type of thing that I don't enjoy is that I, where I'm like, why are you guys even like this? Like why? And you can rationalize it to me all you want book and in the comments in terms of like, they're just looking out for their people and they're like rubbing up against each other or whatnot. But it's the exact sort of setup that I don't enjoy because honestly there's no reason for them to be acting this way at all. Even if they're got if they've got like opposing goals or whatnot, they're not actually enemies. They're supposed to be working together. And so whenever they've had a scene together, it just absolutely grates on my nerves and I I don't find this fun. <laughs> like I'm looking at both of them. Like are the highly powerful trained leaders of people in the room here with us today because they're just acting like little snots. I'm like, get over it. Um, <laughs> uh, so, it, and I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine with this being the beginning of the arc and watching how that relationship progresses or whatever, but it's not making the beginning of this fun for me, which is why I'm kind of like, I guess I'll listen to this. So hopefully that breaks sometime soon and we get something a little bit more interesting whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I get too sick of it though, I'm not going to spend like my Christmas Eve greeting and bearing a, a book. So we'll see what I pick up next. It's just after two o'clock. I'm like only taking five minutes to rest my feet. I only have a few hours to finish up in the kitchen. Today has turned out to be one of those days that like nothing goes quite right. Even things I've done a million times for some reason aren't just not turning out so I'm just trying to take it on the chin I did finish iron and magic and it was fine I think I'm gonna give it like a three star I appreciate having this like information going into the last Kate Daniels book but all of my frustrations about the early part of this story and like the enemies to lovers stands I do like Alara and Hugh better like at the end of this but they're not my favorites I, I don't have strong feelings towards them. I do like them better. I'm most excited for if and when they show up in the last Kate Daniels book because I just, I love what they will bring to Kate. <laughs> this also really highlighted for me like a number of things that I like, like about the Kate Daniels series. And the first thing that I like almost immediately clocked and missed was like Kate's first person narration. The reason that the stories work so well for me, even when they're like being tropey or really exposition heavy, is that they're so firmly rooted in Kate's voice and sort of her snarkiness, uh, but also her sincerity and her earnestness when things, when she's being hurt, when people around her are hurting. Like, her voice is such a big part of why the series works. So being removed from that and into this third person narration, it didn't, it didn't work as effectively for me. And like, you know, it's not fair also to compare like where I am in Kate Daniels, like nine books in with these characters and these side characters or whatever. But I remember like more immediately hooking on to the characters and side characters in Kate Daniels. Whereas here we get a whole new cast of people surrounding Hugh and Alara and it was it was more fuzzy it wasn't as easy to like get to know them and like really latch on to them or whatever I would keep reading on in this series but it's not like this you know spinoff series mostly because it's the Kate Daniels world but I'm not like super like oh I can't wait he was so awesome or anything like that he was just fine to me it was I get why people like him. He's like a big hulking man who <laughs> fights real good. Um, and I don't know. Yes, I get why people like him. It's just like not totally for me. And that was book 17, I believe, for the month. Uh, and I'm going to take a little break from listening to audiobooks because mostly because I wanted to take my headphones off. I was like done with wearing them for so long. Um, so I'm just going to take a little break. But then after that, I think I'm going to just start my magic triumphs and ride this wave until the end. Merry after Christmas. <laughs> uh, listen, the reason that I don't do vlogs more is because I am actually terrible at remembering in the moment to capture anything. And like, even when I do I'm like oh I'm doing it and then I look back and I'm like 
what did I, what was I actually doing in that moment? What did I actually capture? Like, I don't know, I'm just really bad at this, but Christmas was good. It always feels to me like it just passes by in such a blur. There's so much anticipation and preparation. And then I feel like I blink and it's over and we're in this weird space before the end of the year where nothing is real, time isn't real, nothing matters. And that's where we currently are. I ended up spending the night at my mom's house after Christmas like I planned. But then the next day also like we went to church and then we had family dinner again on, on actual Christmas. and she was like why don't you stay one more night so I did my parents and my little sister went to Tampa to visit our family but I stuck around here so today I went to lunch with my older sister and I spent some time with her and her kids and my brother-in-law and then I am now finally home I got back and my apartment was so stinking cold I know you guys don't want to hear my South Florida problems <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it continues to be entirely way too cold for South Florida. Today has been the worst days because not only was it like lows in the 40s for us, but it's been like raining all day and it's just like cold, icy rain. So I just don't want to do anything except for get under my weighted blanket and, you know, finally be wearing all of these sweaters and sweatshirts that I usually don't wear um <laughs> and read uh I, I want to read so in between yesterday christmas and this morning i finished magic triumphs by alona andrews the 10th and final book in the kate daniel series i did it i said i was going to do it before the end of the year and i freaking did it i finally finished reading the kate daniel series like i actually cannot believe it i was having so many emotions while reading this because i was like wrapping up the series it really just made me appreciate the series as a whole which is one of those series that I think is just greater than the sum of its parts and it also is a series that gets better and builds as you read through it which is definitely a commitment for 10 books but if you are somebody who likes to invest into series if you enjoy urban fantasy paranormal romance or anything along those lines or in that genre this is just so solid so good and I enjoyed the end I think there was a lot here that was incredibly satisfying as I said when I read book nine we really see Kate coming into her power and I loved that aspect of it I love Kate Daniels as a main character so so much so seeing her here in this role where she takes on like a new role in her life in this last book and just getting to see that interaction was really wonderful there were a few things that were like not perfect for me not as good not great one is that we have a little bit of a time jump in here so we see Kate like after about a year or so and in that time you can tell that she just continued to grow in her power and while I understand like kind of fast forwarding through that and why they did it and I don't feel like we really missed anything material there were times that I was like wait she can do that now or you know like we, when did we get here and so I did kind of feel that time jump at points and this also relies pretty heavily on everybody kind of making their own separate plans to like defeat the big bad so many people did things without like using their words and in secret and then every time it was like I did this behind your back deal with it and that was just kind of like it and Kate like had her own plan as well but she was a little bit more forthcoming in terms of like this is what it is and we knew that this had been building like it's not really a surprise what she intended to do as like a last resort and so that one felt a little bit different also I'm biased toward Kate <laughs> but everybody else was just like I did this behind your back I I didn't tell you I kept a secret from you and deal with it and I just I didn't I didn't really like that I didn't like the reliance of the plot on that but I didn't like it from a character standpoint either and then this really just solidified for me how I feel about Julie as a character and that is very mixed emotions especially as she has grown up like the little like snotty child thing was better when she was younger but as she's grown up and they are starting to establish her more as like the main character who will continue like there's a spin-off series that follows Julie I just don't like we we don't spend enough time with her and her decisions to make her anything other than that snotty child and her decisions continue to just baffle me like I do not understand a single thing that Julie does and everything that she does do just makes me so upset and so angry including how this book f like leaves off like it's like the final thing that we see from this book is Julie being like I'm making another decision and it just made me be like 
why? So Julie is not my favorite and so I'm not super hyped to like continue on with her spinoff series. I will just like I read the Hugh stories but it's not like something I'm like I'm chomping at the bit to like get to that. This also ended like really quickly considering like how much time we've spent and maybe that was going to feel that way whichever way you slice it because it's like 10 books in or whatnot but truly the end like happens so fast and then even like the very very end was like and this person this person this person and this person died and Kate was sad and I was like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like one of them was a fairly major character that I was I literally had to go back and be like that person died because it was just said in such an offhanded way that I was like what do you what do you mean? It was very, very weird to me the way that that was like recap and the speed with which that happened. Um, but <laughs> generally this was satisfying. It was a good experience. There were lovely Kate and Curran moments and family moments and whatnot. There were those weaknesses that I talked about. So overall, I would put this at like a four out of five stars. It is definitely not my favorite in the series, but I did have fun and it was nice to sort of like culminate and wrap up the series overall. All. I freaking did it. <laughs> yes. Uh, after I finished this, I actually started reading another book. I started reading Twisted Hate by Anna Huang, and this was one of the Goodreads finalists for the romance category. So I tried to continue reading Reminders of Him, and I got like one more chapter in before I was like, I, I, I need to read this a chapter at a time. Like, I can't even binge it, like on three speed. Like, it's, it's a lot. So I started Twisted Hate, which is surprising to me how easily it's reading, especially considering it's an enemies to lovers story. Like there's a lot about this book that isn't necessarily bad, but is not for me. Um, so it's reading quickly, but I'm just kind of like whatever about the dynamic that it's set up and about the characters. But I see why other people might really enjoy this. Is it like best of the year quality? Not in so far as I see, but also that's being colored by the fact that this is also just like very, a very not for me story. So I'm about halfway through that one and I could probably finish it today, but I, I didn't forget. I didn't forget because I definitely feel like I mentioned it in this vlog already that I wanted to reread Legendborn and I had to read Bloodmark for the house salt thing, but I got caught up in this whole like time doesn't make sense and what, what even is today sort of thing. And I forgot that we were supposed to do the live show for Bloodmark tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday. And I like haven't even started it. Uh, so they reminded me and <laughs> my friends reminded me in the house salt chat and they were like, yeah, what time is the live show tomorrow? And I was like, Oh, what? So we've pushed the live show off to Thursday. And so that leaves these two things as my next priority. And then I'm in the middle of Twisted Hate. I'm seven or eight chapters into Reminders of Him. And I'm about 100 pages into Thistlefoot still. And I haven't read any more of that. So I've got a bunch that I could focus on finishing up here. Good morning. I had to work a little bit this morning. Basically, I told everybody that I was going to be taking as much time as I could off at the end of the year. But like, for instance, today I had to run our final payroll, so I couldn't take it all off, but I'm just kind of like checking in, doing what I need to do, and then dipping. So I did most of my work to do already. This morning I was up pretty early, and now I'm thinking about moseying on over to Barnes & Noble, spending some gift card cash over there on their 50% off hardback sale. For a reading update, I did start Legendborn last night and I'm halfway through. I'm like speeding through it. I'm listening on like three speed or something like that. So I have like two hours of audiobook left and I will definitely finish that today. I am remembering a lot of the high points, a lot of the world building. I'm kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, that vaguely. But it's also reinforcing to me that the world building is pretty messy and you really just need the bare bones of it to understand the story. And maybe that will, like when I get into blood marked it will cause more confusion but at least I'm refreshing my memory enough that I don't think that will be the case and it's sort of affirming that even if I am confused in blood marked I think it's Tracy Dion's fault <laughs> and not mine and it's also just it, this is like my first experience of Legendborn but just like more I am more impressed with some of the ways that Dion sort of weaves in the experience of being a black girl into this like fun mythical adventure and there are ways that I totally see how people kind of bristle against the way that this is a story about like fun mythical adventure but it's also about black 
pain and Black trauma. And so we often talk about the prevalence of those stories, not only amongst what is being published by Black authors, but also like what ends up getting popular is often these stories of Black pain and Black trauma. And then you also, of course, have like the Black main character with her white love interest. So tropes that we see over and over again that I absolutely understand why people are kind of done with them. But at the same time, they are things that still to this day, not not the white love interest, but <laughs> The, like exploration of like ancestry and not having that ancestry when there's a secret society that traces family lines back and root magic and grief and trauma. I think it's just really wonderfully done here. Like I keep having these moments where I'm just like, I don't know, full of emotion at seeing it reflected on the page. So all of that stuff is like, like I said, just like my first experience, but like more reaffirmed. And I remember saying that I actually liked Cell and the Love Triangle, but like halfway through, I'm like, why? I was so annoyed with his character. And I don't know if that's like the big switch that is, they just kind of hit the point where he's like, okay, I guess you're not as bad as I thought you were. So I know that this is like coming up the section where I would have decided to like him, but th Considering how this started, I, I am shocked by previous me saying that. And I'm interested to see what actually happens in the second half to change my mind. Because that guy, he's annoying. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to definitely finish Legendborn today and start Bloodmarked. We'll see how far I get into Bloodmarked. But first to the bookstore. I'm the freaking worst. I continue to be the worst at vlogging. I went to the bookstore and I was so like paying attention to getting footage or making a TikTok, which I also posted to YouTube shorts, that I didn't capture any video <laughs> for this vlog. Um, but I'm back from the bookstore. So I make these videos, I've done it twice now, where I basically go to the bookstore and I know I want to buy books, but I set myself like some parameters. So this time I wanted to buy a book I've heard good things about, one that I've heard nothing about, so basically a cover by, a book that is currently, like it was already on my TBR when I walked in, and something I have already read and loved, and a book that is outside of my comfort zone. So I bought five books and here they are. A book I've heard good things about is Under the Skin, which I can't remember. I think actually the good thing that I heard about this was that I was looking for like best of lists, and this was listed on a couple of best of nonfiction list I want to say like I can't even remember where I got the general impression that this was one that I wanted to read. I did look it up at my library and on Libby and on Scrib and there wasn't any way that I could get it with like my current subscriptions or free or anything like that. So I had it on my list as something to either purchase with an audiobook credit or purchase a physical copy of and so I purchased a physical copy of this one. I didn't read a ton of nonfiction this year so not to disturb like my entire reading plans for the rest of this week, but I don't know. <laughs> like I could get to this one before the end of the year. I typically read nonfiction very fast, so that is a possibility. Next I have my cover by a book that I hadn't heard anything about and I just grabbed because it looked interesting and that is Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair. I don't, I'm not saying that this, like nobody has talked about this, just that I personally haven't heard a single thing about this. So I just really liked the cover design. It is set in the 80s, it is about artistic women. It sounds very coming of agey. So like tick, tick, tick on things that I enjoy in fiction. And again, just a great cover. Next is a book that was already on my TBR and that is Lessons in Chemistry. This is part of a secret TBR. I know <laughs> that is not usually like the content that I make, but I am working on a video that has a secret TBR. I'm going to start like chipping away at this TBR in January. It's kind of a lot of books and you guys will find out what the heck this is about in February. So yes, I didn't really plan to buy this in physical copy. Like, like I want to get as many of these books that I have to read free from the library, but it was 50% off. It's Barnes and Noble's book of the year. It's like the Spread Edges exclusive sort of thing. Hopefully I like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the risk, isn't it? But anyways, yeah, this one was on my TBR. I now have a copy to read. A book I've already read and enjoyed is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. I read this this year. I listened to it on audiobook and I knew that I wanted a physical copy. I really, really enjoyed this. It is very weird. It has an open ending. It is very disorienting. 
being and you follow what is essentially an unreliable narrator because of what she is going through in terms of her own experience of the story. So for all of those reasons, I understand why this isn't for everybody because you just kind of get dropped into this mysterious situation and you kind of leave it like what the heck just happened. But what this does well is commentary. It's got a lot of really wonderful observational wit and it is about medical experimentation on marginalized communities. And so like everything you're feeling about what the heck and like who would do this, I think about this a lot, <laughs> especially because it is so like weird and open and whatnot. So I, I definitely wanted a copy. It is one that I would reread. And finally, a book out of my comfort zone. I got Jackal by Erin E. Adams. And this is out of my comfort zone because as I say all the time, I don't read a lot of horror. I am a chicken. <laughs> but I did read like a bunch of like thriller horror -y things back to back. And I don't know, I'm kind of in the mood for something along those lines. I also find that either I'm listening to a horror audiobook like in the daytime and that's okay, thrillers, horrors, and that sort of thing, or like reading it also helps me because I feel like I can pace myself a little bit better, like close when I need to, skim where I need to, and that sort of thing. So I have heard great things about this and so I wanted to give it a try. <laughs> Wish me luck. This is the full haul. Very happy with this and also not me getting stuff finally off my physical TBR and just like replenishing it. Um. <laughs> but right now I'm gonna go um, play some Sims. <laughs> it's, you know what, it's after Christmas time, it's fake, and finish listening to Legendborn. It is just after 6.30, which means that I finished Bloodmarked with an hour and a half to spare. <laughs> oh man, you know, well, before I get into this, I will say that I was procrastinating reading Bloodmarked by reading Under the Skin. And, <laughs> and I think that this is great. I think it is a very good primer, at least into learning about how racism affects healthcare systems. And it also goes into mental health as well. I think it is presented in a clear way. I think that the author does a really a good job of grounding everything in like personal stories and like picking examples and bringing it to that personal like narrative level as well and then supporting that with facts and data. So I think that it is like a good introduction, a good overview of the way that we can see racism affecting these systems. There's stuff in here that I had heard before and that I have seen or experienced before but it is also something I would reread because the way that it presents the argument is so well done that I think that just like sort of internalizing it <laughs> is very useful as well. So overall a good reading experience. I'm like dancing around like enjoyable or words like that because obviously reading about racism in healthcare systems is not like an enjoyable experience but the work itself <laughs> is worthy. I would give this like a four out of five stars. And after I finished that and I could no longer procrastinate that's when I went back and I finished Bloodmarked. So this is definitely something where I think that rereading Legendborn was the wrong thing to do for me, especially because this isn't like the reading mood that I am in currently. I was not in the mood for this. And then so I kind of used up my tolerance and my attention span for like a young adult fantasy by really reading Legendborn. And then so I think that that made this overall experience not as enjoyable, especially because it was like forced, right? Like I had to read this <laughs> and I left myself very little time. That might account for some of my experience, but I think some of this was just like overly long and repetitive also. I feel like a lot happened in this and it wasn't ever like slow, but it was sort of that a lot happening that also was like, did anything matter? Because we would just find ourselves very quickly in these situations. We would very quickly get out of for whatever reason and over and over again. And it felt like we, there was like a pattern to the situations we were getting in, in terms of like, oh no, mortal danger. Oh no, like Brie and Cell are fighting. Oh no, Brie is hurt. Oh no, she blacked out. Oh, okay, she woke up again. And like, it was like over and over and over again in a way that it was very difficult for me to focus on this. I feel, I finished it. I've got the bare bones of it. I would not, I, don't ask me what happened in this. <laughs> 
like, don't, I don't, I don't know what happened in this book. And then so part of me is like, okay, is that more of like the weaknesses of like Tracy Dion's storytelling where like her world and her action sequences in general are like so wishy-washy, like things are happening, but I'm just like not able to grasp onto any of it. And so is that like at play here? Is it me? Was it my mood? Was it skimming? Was it too long? I don't know. <laughs> it's very rare where I walk away from a reading experience where I'm just like, what was that? But that's how I feel here. Overall, I, I do think that this wasn't as strong as the first book or as enjoyable as the first book. So I would rate it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I know I just complained a lot about it and I still gave it a 3.5 stars because I, I do think that there is good here in terms of like the the adventure that the main character is on. So our main, I do like our main character. I want to root for her. I like what she represents sort of at the crux of this magical secret society, but also this ancestral root magic as well. But she is is uh, annoying <laughs> in this book. Maybe this is a three star. She's so annoying in this book and in a way that it makes sense for her story and for a young adult book and she's like lost and confused in all of this but again it's just so long and it's so much of her being lost and confused over and over and then just sort of jumping into things, jumping to conclusions, jumping into danger and then people dying or getting hurt because she like jumped into something and it's called out by the story like everybody's like there goes Brie again just jumping into danger so it's like self-aware but it doesn't make it enjoyable I was just kind of like oh my god um it created a repetitive cycle that I didn't find entirely fun I think I just talked myself back down to a three star for this one but we'll see after our conversation because talking about it with how salt always helps me solidify my feelings I'm gonna do that in just over an hour and that's it for this reading vlog. I don't even remember like honestly it feels like I started this a month ago but it was just right before Christmas. I don't know how many books I read in all of this. I guess I'll figure it out um, but this was book number 21. I have until Saturday to read nine books and I know that sounds freaking impossible but I am not giving up hope. I, I am still kind of convinced that I can do this. Um, especially now that I'm like over with obligation reading. I, I mean I do have to read one more thing but it's just another fairyland book so I do have to read that. That's gonna be so fast. I can sort of like I will wait until Saturday I believe is the 31st. I wait until Saturday that if I need to like fill in with like graphic novels or something short I will but I don't want I don't even want to commit to that yet I'm like no no full length <laughs> I can do this um so <laughs> I think I can do this I'm going to do this live show and then immediately start another reading vlog to take you through the end of this month and to try and read those nine books and we'll we'll see how I do um but yeah this is very productive if you have read or would like to read any of the books that I've mentioned, let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. I'm going to try and read the... Um, so yeah, that one's done. That was book number 12, 13, 14, 15, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16,